This is Ryan Elliott for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. I'd like to be joined by Kevin Ajako down here at the press conference. Had a Ben Algeria this weekend. Kevin, first and foremost, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm excited. I'm enjoying the moment. Enjoyed the press conference. So looking forward to Saturday night. Just going to say you got your matchroom debut coming up this weekend. I heard even though it was quite late notice, there's 150 fans coming to support you. The Irish could be making plenty of noise. Life must be pretty good right now. Life's pretty good. Everything's run smoothly for me the last couple of weeks um, in terms of signing new management deal with uh, Paul Reddy and STN saying with, with Matchroom and then obviously I, obviously I got the, the phone call that I was going to be out before the end of the year um, last minute but with three, three, three and a half weeks notice 150 Irish fans are going to be here in uh, Liverpool to support me so I can't wait for it it's going to be an exciting night and, and I'm looking forward to a very special night even you touched on that, that management deal there. I saw something interesting that you put on Twitter. People were debating about fighters being poorly guided or trying to be self-managed. You debated being self-managed, but how hard is it to, for fighters to find that correct guidance? Yeah, it is very hard. You've got to find a manager that is genuine. One of the things, whenever I had a chat with Paul at the start, I said I, I did want to be self-managed because I felt like I will always have my best interest. Um, I, was, I felt like I was badly managed beforehand. Um, and... I wanted someone who was genuine, not just in it to, for me to be a superstar, but wanted wanted what's best for me. Do you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, and I found that in Paul, like genuinely. I'm not saying that's because he's my manager. Uh, he, he genuinely does a great job, takes all the stress and hassle off my shoulders in terms of tickets, s- sorting stuff out for, uh, for this and and stuff like that. So I'm I'm thankful for him, but it is very hard to find that balance and, and find a very good manager came face to face with your opponent for the first time today quite tall have you managed to find much footage of him yeah there is a bit of footage on, of him on YouTube um, I haven't much watched I, I, I never really watch much of my opponents I watch a minute two minutes of the max and instantly I, I have a game plan in my head on, on how to beat them so um, yeah he is quite tall but I've always been a small middleweight I've boxed at middleweight in the amateurs for, since I was 17 so um, and throughout my whole career I've always fought people who's taller than me so this is nothing new to me with it being your matchroom debut and all eyes on you, is it on your mind not only to win but to impress as well? Yeah, listen, you always want to impress when, you, when you're when you fighting. Um, this is my matchroom debut, but um, I, I don't just want to impress for other people, but I want to impress for myself. Do you know what I mean? I want to show myself what what I've been putting in, in the gym, working hard in the gym, and, and prove that I can put that into practice on Saturday night. So I'm looking forward to it. But yeah, I do, I do want to impress and, and let... Not just everyone who's going to be there Saturday night, but let the boxing world know in the middleweight division that there's a real force here. Not to say you weren't working extremely hard before, but when everything else around starts falling into place, you know, you've got promotional deal, you know the fights are going to be there for you. Does that give you that little bit extra to know it's all laid out for you and it's, it's just on you to perform now? Yeah, definitely. Like I said, my managers took all the stress off me for the last couple of weeks. Um, so when everything falls into place, you can just focus on training, focus on fighting and and getting in there and putting on a performance. It makes life so much more easier for you. So um, this is probably the best camp I've had physically, training-wise, and, and the happiest I've ever been. Everything's fell into place for me, and I, I have I, no, no stones been unturned, and um, I expect a big performance Saturday night. All being well on Saturday, what kind of level do you want to go to next year, and how active do you want to be as well? I'll be very active. I want to have at least three, four fights next year. Um, I, I've had an inactive... 2021 I've only fought one so I'll fight twice before the end of the year thankfully um, but listen I know how good I am how good I can be as long as I stay dedicated and, and motivated and train hard um, nothing less than a than a world title for me is is acceptable at the end of my career um, but w- within the next year I, I want to pick this title up on Saturday night uh, get myself in the world rankings and then just start climbing the ranks from there be in some big fights hopefully maybe go down the European route and, and pick up a European title or something like that um, but I'm excited for Saturday night to pick up my first title and, and be in a big fight I saw you before the press conference having a chat with Katie Taylor I know she's someone you spent time with around the gym and stuff like that how do you sum up the impact Katie's had on boxing and Ireland as well both amateur and professional she's had a massive impact on, on boxing on women's boxing and we heard her women's boxing wouldn't be what it is today um, Without her, Irish boxing possibly wouldn't be what it is today. Do you know what I mean? She's inspired so many people back home. Uh, it definitely inspired me and, and motivated me. I remember training with her certain training camps um, back in Ireland and just watching her train and, and, and seeing the motivation she had back then when she had achieved it all in the amateurs. And she always trained hard. So that gave me that inspiration and motivation, motivation to um, always train hard, always push for my goals and, and give it my all. 
I was out um, for the Jay Quigley fight with Demetrius Andrade recently. A lot of Irish came over and they couldn't have spoken highly enough about Katie Taylor. I think it's hard for us to gauge from this side of the water sometimes just how big she is, but how do you explain how big she's become in Ireland? Oh, she's a superstar. She's a superstar and she's so humble. Um, it's, it's insane. You, if, you, if you spoke to Katie, you wouldn't think she is an undisputed Olympian, Olympic champion, world champion in the amateurs, European champion. I mean, you, you wouldn't think she's achieved all these things because she's so humble, so nice. Um, but she's a, she's a superstar and she's had a massive impact on Irish boxing. If that Taylor Serrano fight gets made, fight gets made next year and it's maybe MSG, a lot of Irish in there, you're going to be calling everybody you can to get on that card? Without doubt, without doubt. We, we've, we spoke to Eddie about fighting in, in uh, Belfast in America, so definitely that would be unbelievable for me to go out there and, and fight her on the card. Final one before I let you go, Kevin. Uh, Chris Eubank Jr. and Liam Williams, they've got a new date. It looks like the fight is now on. Who wins and how? Williams. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of Williams. I've said this before. I like the way he goes about his business. Um, but I think Williams, late stoppage or, or, or comfortable on points, um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't just see a way Chris Eubank um, beats him. I don't... I don't I don't know. I, I don't think he can outbox him. I don't think he's a good enough boxer to outbox him. If he if he does fight him, I think Williams, that's Williams' game, do you know what I mean? So I think Williams, they were late stoppage or, or points. All right, well, Kevin, thank you for speaking to Boxing Social and best of luck on Saturday night.